Hello and welcome to Carmela's Sanctuary of Squirrels. This week I'll be showing you an eastern fox squirrel who is quite unusual because his entire underside is black instead of the normal cream or orange. Join me to learn more about this beautiful squirrel, why he came here, and how he's doing now. Thank you for joining me today. I've only ever seen one melanistic fox squirrel before, and it was an orphaned baby being raised by another rehabber. Ever since I saw that one several years ago, I've yearned to have one come to the sanctuary. Little did I know that when I did, it would be an injured adult. Sadly, Peter was paralyzed from the waist down. His bladder was swollen. He hadn't been able to urinate since he was injured. So I expressed his bladder for him. Notice how dark his urine was. That's because there are so many tannins in the food squirrels eat in the wild. That's also what causes their teeth to become orange. As always, one of the first orders of business was to bathe him. At first, I assumed he was injured by a dog, fox, or coyote. His injury is typical of that type of attack. What was odd, though, was that I could not find any puncture wounds on his torso as there should have been. Was he hit by a car, then? If so, how did he survive? So many questions went through my head as I examined and bathed him. For the most part, he was pretty docile during his bath. But I can never let my guard down with these guys. They're fast. Whoa, did you see that? Let's slow that down a bit. Phew, glad he only got the tip of my glove. Well, I let him have it and simply took the glove off, then continued bathing him. I also noticed that his tail was shorter than normal. It had obviously been injured previously. The end of his tail had come off, but the wound was completely healed. This squirrel was a lucky guy to survive not once, but twice, and he wasn't even a year old yet. It was time to rinse him off, dry him, and then head back to the squirrel room with him. Fortunately, he didn't make any further aggressive advances. Back in the squirrel room, I finished drying him off. He just clung tightly to my hand under the towel as I rubbed him dry. As I dried him, he gradually relaxed more and more, becoming used to being handled by me. Then I rolled him over and started combing him. I only found a few flea larvae, but nothing unusual in that regard. Again, as I combed him, he was just relaxing more and more and more. He really liked being combed. Once finished with his combing, I gave him a few drops of Revolution to help prevent any more fleas from developing. Then it was time to express him again. His bladder had filled up again in the time between when he had gotten here and the end of his bath. Once that was done, I placed him in the cage I had prepared for him. His intake was finally done and he settled in for the night. Early the next morning, I took him out to check his bladder. His entire belly was wet. On the one hand, this was great news, because it meant that his bladder had evacuated on its own during the night. On the other hand, the question became, will he keep himself clean? If so, then all would be fine. If not, then we would have the problem of his urine being on his skin, causing irritation and eventually causing bed sores. Over the first several days, I checked him multiple times daily. Many times I would find his belly dry, which was terrific because it meant that he was cleaning himself. However, there were still times when his belly would be completely soaked again. It was time to start thinking out of the box. An idea came to me. I was sure they made puppy diapers. Maybe something like that would work for him if I could find something small enough. After viewing several pages of diapers on Amazon, though, I concluded that a regular puppy diaper just wouldn't work. While it would take care of soaking up his urine, his feces would be stuck inside, which would cause different issues instead. Suddenly, something caught my eye. A belly band. Made to wrap around the belly, it would soak up the urine, 
but its tail and anus would be unhindered, allowing the feces to simply fall out of the way. So I ordered some up in the smallest size they had and gave them a try. Surprisingly, Peter didn't seem to mind at all. He let me put it on and simply laid there afterwards without even checking it out. I had been concerned about having to frequently change the band for washing, but my daughter-in-law suggested using nursing pads inside the band. They would soak up the urine and are disposable, so eliminating the need for frequent washing. I immediately ordered some. I put one inside the band, then placed Peter back in his cage to see what he would do. At first all went well. Peter kept it on and didn't even seem to know it was there. Eureka! A solution had been found. Or had it? Sadly, it had not. Because his back legs are paralyzed, when he moves around the cage, he simply drags them behind himself. This stretches out his legs, and the belly band just slides right off. So I was back to square one and trying to think of a solution. Meanwhile, I decided to give him a bath at least once a week, along with drying him off multiple times a day. Fortunately, because it was just his belly that needed to be cleaned, I only had to bathe him from the armpits down. This made bathing him much easier. Meanwhile, another possibility came to mind. What if I could somehow attach the belly band to a leash harness, minus the leash? So I ordered a little cloth one that looks like a vest. Using overall clips, I was able to attach the belly band to it. Then it was time to put it on Peter. To say he wasn't thrilled was to put it mildly. He started going after that thing right away. Back to square one. I decided that simply drying him off wasn't going to be enough. I really needed to clean the urine off of him, but I knew he wasn't going to tolerate being bathed daily, much less multiple times a day. So I had another thought, hypoallergenic puppy wipes. Using these, I'm able to remove the urine from the skin multiple times a day. While he doesn't like it, he tolerates it pretty well, and it does take care of the irritation issue. In the little over a month he's been with us, his leg muscles have atrophied. His feet curl under, and it's hard to separate his thighs to wipe him off. I've noticed that he keeps his legs to one side in the cage. He can no longer spread them wide, which has compounded the urine issue. I will continue to try to find a solution that won't aggravate him. He does have a very sweet, docile temperament, and actually likes being pet. He doesn't like being picked up, but that's typical. I have yet to meet a squirrel that does. After about a week here, I noticed that he actually had scabs on his face and neck. These were from puncture wounds he had sustained when he was attacked. What this means, though, is that it wasn't a dog, fox, or coyote that attacked him. It was most likely a hawk or an eagle. When they attack a squirrel, they tend to grab them by the head. Apparently, Peter managed to get out of the raptor's grip, but broke his spine when he fell to the ground. Peter continues to fare well in all other aspects. He has a good appetite, and he enjoys looking out the window at the yard. When the weather warms up, we intend to take him outside for out-of-cage time, and will allow him to wander about the yard. Please watch the channel for more videos about Peter as his stay with us continues. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day.